They say Brits play the best villains. But what makes a good villain? We're impeccably dressed, ferociously articulate. And the only thing worse than our bark is our bite. And as such, we need a vehicle that complements those features. And that, Mr. Bond, is why I drive a Jaguar. Because it's good to be bad. Sorry, James, I've got to take this. Odd job, How's my favourite henchman. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. What's happened? What do you mean you've lost Miss Moneypenny? I thought you locked her in Bond's car. What the hell's an ejector seat? Did you chase after her? Why'd you throw your hat at her? I gave you a gun. Uh, okay, where's your hat now? In a tree. Wonderful. Right, stay there. I'll come and get you. Okay. 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 Okay, bye. Okay, love you too. Bye. Won't be long, old chap. Sure. Gonna go this way. Now, Jaguar for me has always been a brand that, despite making very good luxury, quintessentially British vehicles, never really had anything in the modern lineup that got me hard at the thought of owning one. I know they had the XK, but it never really did anything for me. Um, I think if you wanted something exciting, you would have got an R8, you would have got a V8 Vantage, you would have got a 911, Gran Turismo, GTR. But I say would, because now Jaguar have this, the F-Type. And boy, did Jag come out swinging. The F-Type was released in 2013 in its convertible guise first, and the eyes of the automotive world just lit up. The Jag had created undoubtedly one of the best looking cars of this generation. However, as much as I love it when anything this good looking has its top off, there's no substitute for leaving something to the imagination. And luckily for me, in 2014, Jaguar did something almost impossible. They made the F-Type better looking and introduced the coupe. Both the convertible and coupe have three variations to their name. You've got the V6, V6S and VAS for the convertible, and you've got the V6, V6S and VAR for the coupe. Both the V6 and V6S are 3 litre supercharged V6s, and they provide the same performance between the convertible and the coupe. The base model V6 has 335 brake horsepower, 332 pound-feet of torque, a 0-60 of about 5.1 seconds, and it will go on to 161 mile an hour. The V6S is the same engine but it's been slightly tweaked, so you've got 375 brake horsepower, 339 pound-feet of torque, 0-60 of 4.8 seconds and a top speed of 171. Now both of the V8 variants use the same 5 litre supercharged V8 and they're both good for 186 mile an hour, but they do differ in performance between the convertible and the coupe. The VAS convertible has 488 brake horsepower, 461 pound-feet of torque and will do 0-60 in 4.2 seconds. And last but by no means least, the monstrous VAR Coupe has got 542 brake horsepower, over 500 pound-feet of torque, and it will do 0-60 in 4 seconds flat. That is blisteringly quick. In fact, I was even told by Jaguar that apparently the VAR Coupe will do 50-70 to 70 quicker than a Lamborghini Aventador. Now, you could argue that's a bit trivial, which maybe it is, but that is quick. I mean, that's almost as quick as a guy that's about to end a dry streak. Hello? Hello, it's me. What are you up to? Oh, I'm, I'm just stuck on the side of the road. My car's broken down. Oh, that sucks. I'm just on the sofa. Um, do you want to come over? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to. But you're like an hour away, and I mean, the only way I'm going to get there is if I run. I'm not, not going to do that. I'm home alone. Hello? Hello? Now all that British beef is delivered to the rear wheels through Jaguar's new 8-speed semi-automatic gearbox. Now it is a bit of a shame that Jag didn't build the F-Type with the option of a 3-pedal setup manual gearbox, 
but you can forgive them because this new ZF8V gearbox is just brilliant. Thanks to Ecclesi Space Gears, the gear changes are so quick and really smooth as well, whether you're pottering through town or blasting down a country road. It's so easy up and down the gears, it feels almost like a dual clutch gearbox. And the gearbox is also very clever too. Um, it holds the right gears when you're going in and out of corners, it matches revs, blips on the downshifts, and to be honest, it makes you come across like you're a better driver than you are. But if you want a true driving experience, wrap your hands around the paddles, whack dynamic mode on, and go to town. With the flick of a switch, you turn this poised little cat into a feral animal. Sharpens the throttle response, quickens the gear changes, increases the steering weighting, sharpens the suspension, and it really makes the car feel alive. And when you are going to town, you've got nice big steel rotors front and back to slow you down, which do actually increase in size depending on which model you get. And for the first time ever on a Jaguar, they actually give you the option of carbon ceramic discs as well. But they're not cheap, they're about eight grand. And another first for Jaguar is torque vectoring by braking, which is an option only available on the VAR. And what that does is that breaks the inner wheels on cornering to maintain agility, and that is really clever. The steering is also really responsive as well. You just move the wheel and the car darts, eager to go wherever you point it. it makes it feel really alert, and it's a lot of fun. Another reason why the car handles so well is down to the F-Type's construction. Now, Jaguar used the world's largest aluminium press to create a body that wasn't just beautiful, but also lightweight and firm, which is a great example of form and function. In fact, the addition of the roof has resulted in the coupe being 80% more rigid than the convertible. So not only have you got a car that's better looking in my opinion, but also one that's stiffer than a schoolboy's sock. And it's also comfy too, despite being the most rigid car Jag's ever made. Even with the basic suspension set up on the V6, I mean, it's firm, but it's not bone shattering. I mean, if you compare it to Jaguar's other cars like the XF, you might disagree, but I mean, that'd be as fair a comparison as having a bowl of rusty nails and then eating a the yogurt. For those of you with the V6S, VAS and VAR, you'll benefit from the car's active dynamic damping as standard. And that feature places loads of little sensors around the car. Now what these sensors do is they assess the road-induced body motion 100 times a second and the steering input 500 times a second, and then adjusting the dampers accordingly to help increase agility and stability, which is clever stuff. So it's pretty, it's quick, and it's clever. But if there's one thing that can steal the limelight from this car's looks, performance, and handling, it is the noise this thing makes. When you sit in this driver's seat, you become the conductor to what is undoubtedly one of the best automotive orchestras available under anyone's right foot. Mm. Jaguar spent so much time and money perfecting the exhaust on this car, and trust me, it was time and money very well spent. This thing is so raspy, it snarls when you blip the throttle, it roars when you put your foot down, and the best thing ever, this thing crackles and bangs on the overarm like you would not believe. It can be sensible and quiet when it wants to be, but it takes like a little bit of goading and then this thing will have you unnecessarily downshifting and accelerating all over the place. And that's just the V6, the V8s are all that and more. They are absolutely ungodly, undoubtedly one of the best sounding V8s from a car I've ever heard. This thing makes a C63 AMG sound like a Nissan Leaf. And I'm being serious, honestly, the noise that comes out the back of these things is more aggressive than Kanye West that time I tried to give him advice. All right, that was Alarm Clock by Feed Me. You guys listening to 103.9 7845 Unleaded FM. Today we're joined by Kanye West in the studio, everybody. We've got Kanye West. Kanye, huge fan of Yeezus. I'm going to say it now. But I reckon next album, switch it up a little bit, maybe go to a different sound. You cannot give me any advice! Driving position is great, you're nice and low to the ground, you're nice and snug in these sports seats which you get as standard and you can upgrade them if you want to performance seats which give you a little bit more sort of side support during performance driving. The dashboard's nice and clear too which I really like, the centre console as well, very nice, ergonomic, looks really cool. This particular one was actually carbon dipped by the guys down at Wicked Coatings. Um, Jaguar do give you the option of having it in carbon fibre but it comes out matte which I don't think looks as good as gloss um, but at least you guys got some options. But what Jag do give you at standard is actually pretty good too. Um, you've got a nice 8 inch touchscreen and interface which is really nice to use. Uh, you've got sat nav, Bluetooth, DAB, 180 watt surround sound system, and also climate control that makes you feel like you're taking off every time you start the air conditioning. Two, one, boost for ignition and lift off of the space shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. You even get start stop as standard on all models, which increases fuel economy by 5%. So the V6 will get about 32 miles per gallon and the V8s will get about 25. As far as practicality goes, the visibility is great. Um, this thing's easy to get around town, um, but it is a two seater. So you're gonna lack in space in the cabin. Um, it falls short maybe a little bit in that sense against rivals like 911 or Gran Turismo or the GTR, because you'll have more space, they've got slightly bigger boots and you've got two seats in the back, which are good for anyone that's, you know, not over four foot high. But there's a silver lining to the F-Type Coupe. Its boot is two and a half times bigger to the Roadsters, which is only actually any good to you if you're a borrower. In fact, you can fit 80 rolls of toilet paper in the back of a coupe. And you're probably wondering, Louis, that seems like a really odd way to quantify boot space using toilet paper. 
And if it was any other car, you'd be right. But this is the F-Type. And as I said, this thing makes a lot of noise. So when this thing crackles and bangs on the overrun when you blast past someone, you actually have to turn around, give them some toilet paper, because there's a good chance they'll have probably shit themselves. I'm honestly trying to find things I don't like about the car. Um, I, I, I don't know. There are so many reasons why this car is great. But arguably one of the most important reasons why the Jaguar F-Type is as good as it is, is all down to its DNA and its predecessor, one of the most iconic cars ever made, the Jaguar E-Type. Following from their huge success at Le Mans in the 1950s with the C and the D-Type, Jaguar set on a mission to replace the XK150 with a groundbreaking new sports car based around their fantastic race-winning straight-six engine. The finalised production model of the E-Type made its debut in March 1961 at the Geneva Motor Show, powered by the XK150S's 3.8-litre straight-six, boasting 265 brake horsepower, a 0-60 at 7.1 seconds and a top speed of near as damn it 150 mile an hour. And not only did this car have the performance that trumped almost every other car at the show, but it was quite possibly the prettiest thing to ever grace the floors of the Geneva Motor Show. In fact, the Jaguar E-Type was so good looking that Enzo Ferrari himself said that it was the best looking car ever made. And from a man that spent his whole life making automotive art, that is a pretty big compliment. And the price for this show-stopping combination of performance and looks? Only £2,160, making it the bargain of the century at the time. It was half the price of the Chevrolet Corvette and the Aston Martin DB4, and a third of the price of the Ferrari 250 GT, which were easily the E-Type's closest rivals at the time. It was such good value, in fact, that Jaguar sold over half a million pounds worth of E-Types during its debut in Geneva and subsequently an average of one every hour at the following New York Motor Show in April. How they kept up with that demand, I will never know, but they went on to sell over 70,000 E-Types. And you're probably wondering as well, why so cheap? Well, the truth is, Jaguar couldn't afford not to sell the E-Type. After the Second World War, the UK's economy was pretty much on the bones of its arse through the 50s and early 60s, and there was only so much steel available to use in various industries. So back then, Lyons had to go cap in hand himself to the government to ask for the steel to build the E-Type, a gamble that didn't just pay off, but one that paved the way for future sports cars. This particular car I'm driving is a 1970 Series 2 fixed head coupe. The original 4.2 litre straight six has been rebuilt and it's also got a new five speed transmission because the old um, four speed gearboxes from Moss were a little bit ropey. Despite being over 50 years old, this car is so much fun to drive. You've got 265 brake horsepower and a car that weighs almost 1200 kilograms. Now that is a definite recipe for some fun. But before you have fun, it takes some getting used to. If you go from a car as technologically advanced and modern as the F-Type and jump straight into a classic, you'll be more clueless than I was after my first date. Thanks for walking me home. That's all right. I had a really nice time tonight. Yeah, um, me too, but it doesn't have to end. Do you want to come in for coffee? Yeah, I would, but I don't drink coffee after 2pm. But I'll see you around. <laughs> Coffee at midnight, she must have been up for hours. Mm. Oh shit. But once you've got yourself comfortable, you can enjoy the ride. The cabin is really snug, it's nice and driver focused, and thanks to the design with the thin pillars, the cabin still feels really airy, much like the F-Type. And the similarities go on. The high angle windscreen, the sloping rear, as well as that lovely little rise on the bonnet which, funnily enough, is due to Jaguar not being able to fit the original 3.8 into the body, but winning Le Mans soldier cars, so it had to make it fit. And so this achingly pretty car got its signature look. Despite the visual similarities, the cars drive very differently as you'd expect. You can really feel the body roll in the E-Type, but I think this adds character to the car. You can't quite hurl it into a corner, stick to the ground, and slingshot out the other side like the F-Type. The E-Type requires gently wafting it into a corner and then elegantly flying out. But perhaps the E-Type's successor is too brilliant. Because as I said, the F-Type does a lot of the work for you. All the sensors in the suspension make hundreds of calculations every second. The gearbox is really clever. It matches revs, hold gears for you. It makes it sound like a better driver than you are. And I love it, don't get me wrong. But I think the E-Type's a more involving drive. With a classic, you have to be alert. You've got to pay attention, really feel the car and see how it responds, making it a more rewarding drive, some would argue. But not only does it provide a different drive, but the E-Type provides an overall different experience. The F-Type is stunning in its turn set, there's no doubt about it, but the E-Type sparks lovable nostalgia in older generations and an unexplicable excitement in younger ones. People want to come up to you, they want to talk to you, it really disarms the public, you become approachable, they want to teach you stuff about the car, they want to learn from you about the car, but I guess that could be said about all popular classics, however the E-Type is very special. And it's only until you've really seen, felt and driven the E-Type that you get an idea of what the F-Type is truly all about.
This car I'm driving is a 2014 V6 F-Type Coupe. It's got about 2,000 miles on it. It's probably worth about 55 grand. The list price is 51 and it's got a few grand's worth of extras. And to be honest, you're unlikely to save much money if you're looking for a coupe in the second-hand market as they have only just come out, whether you're looking for a V6 Coupe, V6S or a VAR. And when you're looking for a coupe, these are my must-have options. One, panoramic roof. Completely changes the inside feel of the car. It is great. Number two, switchable active exhaust. I shouldn't even need to explain that to you, just do it. Black pack, I'm not a fan of chrome on modern cars to be honest with you. And lastly, parking pack, front and rear parking sensors and a reversing camera, which is really, really helpful. And they've even hidden the sensors in the black parts of the bumper so you can barely see them, which is a really nice touch. So that's about three and a half to four and a half grand's worth of options. But if you've got loads of money to burn, I'd get these. Carbon ceramics, powered tailgate, blind spot sensor, visibility pack, cruise control, I'd cover it in carbon fiber, the 20 inch carbon blade alloys, the 770 watt Meridian sound system, extended leather, seat memory pack. When you add that together, you're looking at about 25 grand's worth of options. So if you want a V6S, you're suddenly in VAR money. And to be honest with you, I'd just get the R. Put a pan roof on it, black pack, parking sensors, be done with it. You get a lot more of standard, plus you get the active exhaust, which is amazing. Because I know I joke around, but I do try and be serious sometimes. Buying a car is a big responsibility, it's a lot of money, so you need to be mature and you need to be sensible about it. So if you don't know what to get and you really are struggling, just buy the fastest one. And when you bought your cat, you're going to need to keep it happy by maintaining it. The car needs to be serviced once every year or once every 16,000 miles. And Jaguar have told me that despite the obvious sizes and engines between the three models, the base servicing costs don't actually differ that much because the car is pretty much the same. So the minor service will cost you about £350 and the major service will cost you about £500. But obviously if you need to change things like spark plugs or brake pads or brake discs etc, that all depends on the model that you bought. And as I said, the F-Type's only just come out. So whether you buy a Roadster or a Coupe, you should still have a couple of years warranty on it. But if you need to extend it, it will cost you about £950 from Jag for a V6 or V6S, and it will cost you about £1,100 if you go for a V8 model. And when it comes to putting rubber on the cat's feet, the F-Type can come with either 18, 19, or 20 inch wheels. So on life one we found the following. So for the 18s, you're looking at 145 to 175 for the fronts, and 195 to 265 on the rears. For the 19s, you're looking at about 160 to 275 pound for the front, and 165 to 210 pound for the rear. And for the biggest wheels, the 20 inch, you're looking at 185 to 250 pound for the front, and 220 to 270 pound for the rears. So it's not exactly horrendous on your wallet to maintain either. I am absolutely blown away by this car. It is so much fun to drive, and it's got so much character. Jaguar have finally created a car that not only appeals to the older generations, but to the younger ones as well. Quite frankly, I think Jaguar have created one of the best looking and sounding cars I've ever seen or heard, and they've combined it with fantastic performance and handling, and they've topped it all off with true quintessential British heritage. It really is good to be bad. It's so much fun to drive, it just makes you want to like, like part, it just parps everywhere, it's like pat pat bang. Just, make, just makes you want to be really naughty, it's such a naughty little car. As far as practicality goes, it's a bit of... Anything that makes loud noises, I'm like, oh, loud noises! That's it. All right, that was alarm clock by Feed Me. Oh God, hit my nose on the, hit my nose on the mic, oh God. You're listening to Break It Bad FM. I'm your host, Walt Jr. And today we're going to find out what's for breakfast. And when you're looking for a coupe, these are my must-have options. Panoramic roof. Completely changes the feel of the inside of the car and the looks from the top as well. Uh, no one's going to be looking at you from the top. What the fuck can I say that unless you're a bird? Birds will think you look great. Blind spot setter, sensor, Sen sensor. Have oh, I put sport, haven't I? Yeah. Oh God, sorry. Blind sport, bl blind, blind. Blind sport? A blind sport, blind football. If you're blind, I'm so sorry. Why would a blind person be watching a car review? Well played. Well played. I don't know, maybe they have someone that drives them around and they want to be driven around in a nice car. They could be driven around in I don't know, a Prius. No. Don't, don't say that. Don't say that about someone. That's an awful thing to say. Driven around in a Prius. How dare you? I feel like you just say things just to annoy me. Ryan's arm's getting tired. It's like, stop fucking drinking, that's it. Dip that in my tea. Stop D dip it in, dip it into my water, that's right. You get that nice you get that nice and wet. The whole thing in carbon fibre, but it's matte, which I don't think looks as nice as kind of carbon dicking. Carbon dicking. Do you like your dick carboned? What do you think of the car, Walt? I think it's really good, Dad. It's such a good car, man. 
me so much noise. I'm gonna keep doing that, I'm gonna keep to, to, to do the whole review. And today we're reviewing the F-Time Coop. Hope, hope you have a one day.